Why hello there YouTube, The Comic Chief here and today we will be reviewing Tom Taylor's Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man issue number 2. That's legacy number 26 by the way. Whosoever watches this channel, if he or she be worthy, shall acquire the knowledge from The Comic Chief. The art was drawn by Cabal and Woodard, and I do have to say that it's really, it's actually really nice. I get this chipper vibrant feel when going through the pages and everything doesn't seem dark and gloomy yet, but I think it, it was really drawn really well. Uh, so the writing is awesome. Tom Taylor is a pretty darn good Spidey writer and I think the issue is so much stronger than the first one. The plot, let's talk about that plot. Okay, so I only got that friendly neighborhood vibe a little bit compared to issue number one, but they were trying to sell that. So yeah, I feel like the overall plot of the story arc is going to be pretty good. The character development. It seemed like issue number one was better for Peter, but this one did set up a huge key for one of the supporting characters. I don't give this a full star, so I'm going to have to go with 0.75. Uh, the price tag, I'm going to go with no. Yes, don't get me wrong, it was a good issue, but what sold me in the last issue was a second story that was posted at the end. If we had more of that, this would be a win. Well, something great happens anyway, so yeah, I, but no. Uh, 4.75, no, 3.75 out of 5 stars for me. So before we get to the spoiler part, I wanted to thank all my subscribers, day one fans, loyal commenters. Yes, I'm looking at you, JB and Lindsay, for the constant support and daily comments. I can't thank you enough. Please check out their channels when you can, YouTube, and, and don't forget to like and share. So we begin this issue with Mayor Fisk yelling at someone over the phone, letting us know that he was the one behind the thugs we saw terrorizing Leilani and Peter's apartment complex in issue number one. We cut to Peter's apartment building in Manhattan. We now see Spider-Man watching over the two children we saw in last issue's cliffhanger. They, they were the two orange kids, one boy, Jasper, one girl, Tierra, now eating apples. As Spidey's trying to figure out what is going on, he knows he can't leave the two children alone, so he calls in on a special friend to come watch them, emphasizing that he or she needs to be discreet. Next, he is visited immediately by his landlady, Marnie, and she comes to check in on Peter and is greeted at the door by Fred, who in the last video I did mention that Fred didn't mention that Fred was a supervillain. You may or may not know him as Boomerang, and he was living with Peter in his apartment complex. As Marnie approaches Peter's bedroom, she implies that she either A, knows Peter's Spider-Man, or B, she knew that the kids were put in a laundry basket in the room by Leilani. As Spider-Man tries to escape through the window, he notices one of the goons from issue number one were still there and watching the apartment complex from the road. He aims and shoots a web blast into that goon's face. That's when his mysterious babysitter friend comes in through the window and it actually happens to be Mr. Johnny Storm himself, the Human Torch. Folks, if you're not reading Fantastic Four right now, you're doing it all wrong. I have a renewed love for them, by the way, uh, that two-on-one. Uh, the buddy cop, brotherly love friendship between Peter and Johnny has always been a favorite of mine and what better person to babysit than Johnny, Uncle Johnny. So Spider-Man left him with the kids as he swings out of his room across the street to the goons that were watching the building and he approaches that web-faced goon on the ground. The goon tears the webbing off his face, um, although it took his face off with him. The next page shows us uh, that someone's recording Spider-Man's encounter with the alien and the goon has superhuman strength and he attempts to take down Spider-Man by taking the wall beneath him down. This is when Spider-Man does his heroic stuff and saves the kid who was recording the encounter from getting crushed by the wall. As he does this, the goon makes for a clean getaway in his car. Peter tries to catch him with his webbing but only manages to take the car's bumper off. This is where we are introduced to a brand new character, Detective Sherry Sevens. And by the strange coincidence, she happens to be the wife of the man and mother of the daughter that Peter saved in the inaugural issue. So she feels that she owes the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man and runs the plates on the bumper for him that was left behind to help track down the escaped goon. The trail leads to a consulate building. Who's? We don't know. But as soon as Spider-Man drops down on that goon uh, that escaped him earlier, he surprises him and crashes him straight into a window. As he thinks he's about to win, he is greeted by a familiar face, Marnie his landlady. She followed him to the consulate. As the goon goes to attack them, Marnie pushes Spider-Man out of the way and saves him by punching and completely poning the goon into the ground. She begins to undress and reveal a uniform and her identity known as The Rumor. Oh, and that she knows that Spider-Man is Peter? Uh, that's right, YouTube. A bona fide first appearance right here, right now. And I think we'll find out in the next issue just who she is. So let me know in the comment section below, uh, do you have this on your pull list? Are you going to get it on your pull list? What do you think about it? Well, that's all I got, YouTube. This is Errol, the Comic Chief, going offline.